Hey, welcome back to another exciting video. This is it. Today, we'll compare five different luminosity masking and blending techniques and count down to the top most powerful one. Now, I have to warn you that this tutorial is packed with a ton of information about luminosity masking. So definitely bookmark it for future reference. There are also timestamps in the description below so you can easily skip to different sections at any time. So what is a luminosity mask? Let's start with luminosity first. To truly understand luminosity, it is very important for you to know the basic difference between luminosity or lightness and brightness first. Unlike popular belief, luminosity is not the same as brightness. I repeat, luminosity and brightness in Photoshop are not the same thing. I have explained this with examples in the color theory video linked above. So for those who haven't already seen it, you absolutely must. So if you remember from the color theory video, luminosity, which is also known as lightness, is how light or dark a color appears to us humans. While brightness, on the other hand, is how light or dark a color actually is. So basically, luminosity is the perceived brightness of all the colors ranging from black to white on a gray scale. Let me show you the difference. In the Photoshop color picker, if I select the red hue, the brightness is 100% while the luminosity or the lightness is 54. Now have a look as I drag the cursor along the lighter red tints. See how the brightness is still at 100% while the luminosity value goes on increasing and becomes 100% only when it reaches white. Now let's see a real world difference. Here I have two duplicates of this original RGB image. The second duplicate I will convert to the lab mode where the L or the lightness channel also shows the true luminosity of the image. This is because lightness or luminosity, just like the grayscale, completely disregards color. But when you desaturate the original RGB image, it shows you a black and white image based on the brightness values of the composite RGB channel, which tends to be a bit darker as you can see compared to the true luminosity from the other file. And this information is vital because you will be surprised to know a so-called luminosity mask created with an RGB image is not a true luminosity mask as you get in the lab mode. It is actually a brightness mask. So does it make a difference? The answer is yes, but only with techniques which don't let you modify the masks. If you can interactively refine your mask like I'll be showing you in the end, then it doesn't matter. Also, if you have ever wondered why the brightness histogram in the RGB composite channel is always slightly different from the luminosity channel, well, now you know why. Now moving on. The idea to split the luminosity of the image into different light zones comes from something called the zone system, which was developed by Ansel Adams and Fred Archer during the early black and white film era. The core of the zone system is the zone scale, which basically is divided into different light zones from 0 to 10. And just like this zone scale, a gray scale or a luminosity scale in digital images have 256 shades of gray, which can be split into many luminosity zones. And once we convert any of these luminosity zones as a layer mask, what we finally get is a luminosity mask. Since luminosity masks are created directly from the lightness values of each pixel of the image, they are more precise and completely self-feathering natural selections. And what are masks? A mask or a layer mask in case of Photoshop are nothing but the selected areas or a portion of the layer that are hidden or masked out using the color black. So on a layer mask, only the white areas of that layer are visible. Always remember, on a layer mask, white reveals while black conceals. And now I'm going to share the top 5 ways to create luminosity masks in Photoshop. At number 5 is the classic method to create luminosity masks using the channel selections. So let's head over to the channels and control or command click on the RGB channel. This is the basic highlight selection and this will make a selection of everything brighter than 50% gray. But what if you want to select a brighter gray tone? Have a look. All you need to do is hold Ctrl Shift Option if you're on Windows or Command Shift Option on a Mac and you can see the cursor has an X now which indicates we are about to intersect the selection with itself. What this will do is select a brighter gray tone between 50 and 100% which is 75% gray. And you can keep repeating this until you get the brightest area you wish to select. Although they are called luminosity masks, but in actuality they aren't masks until the selection is converted to a mask. So at this stage, they are just luminosity selections. So how would you turn this selection to a mask? If you want to use the mask just one time on an adjustment layer, simply go ahead and create that adjustment layer and the selection will be converted to a mask. And now whatever adjustments you will do will be visible on only the white areas of this mask because the black areas are masked out or hidden. 
Now each selection that you make of different lightness levels can also be stored as a mask in the channel. So let's undo this and go back to the channels. Now if I want to use this selection for later use, I can simply create a new mask channel which will be based on this luminosity selection. The new channel by default is called the alpha channel but you can always rename this. You can also create and save several luminosity masks using this method like this preset in the classic pro workflow panel and you might find actions to do the same. And you can preview and use them anytime you want to target a particular tonal range. The other benefit of this is that you can use levels to fine tune this mask. And this is important because Photoshop is intersecting selection using numbers. But what if we as artists want a particular shade of grey which lies between 50 and 75. So levels comes very handy to visually pinpoint the grey areas we want to select and does so in real time. And once we are done, simply control or command click to select them. And now you can go back to the layer mask and use this selection to fill black or white in it. At number 4 we have a method that is not only easier than the classic method but also interactive which is using color range. Now I know what you're thinking, color range is for selecting colors. But have a look, let's go to select and then color range. And here below all the colors I have the option to select the shadows, the midtones range which lies between the shadows and highlights pointers and finally the highlights. So once you have one of these selected, in this case the highlights, what you get is a basic luminosity mask which is a great starting point to create a mask for the exact highlights you want to select. First set the fuzziness slider to 0. Then start closing in the highlights you want using the range slider. Remember that the white areas are the one that will be selected. So when you create the mask, the black areas will be hidden or not affected. So once you dial in the luminosity range, it is time to feather the mask using the fuzziness slider. This will help you even the transitions for smoother selections. And once you're done, click OK and you will get your luminosity selection. And just like before, you can create a mask or you can create any adjustment layer and the mask will be automatically created for the active selection. And all the adjustments you make on this adjustment layer will only be visible on the white areas of the mask while on the black areas of the mask the adjustments will be hidden. So basically, only the highlight areas that you selected in color range will be affected by the adjustments you make. While this method is interactive and easy, they offer very limited control because the fuzziness slider doesn't do a great job in feathering compared to the others. Also, these first two techniques that you've seen at number 4 and 5 use luminosity selections to create masks. So one thing you have to keep in mind that selections are always 8 bits even in your 16 bit images. So the luminosity mask created in a 16 bit image will have only 8 bits of tonal information. So that brings us to the number 3 technique to create 16 bits luminosity mask using the Photoshop's big guns, calculations and apply image. Whoa, wait a second before you skip to the next technique. I want you to know that these terms may sound intimidating but there isn't really much to it. They are simply glorified blending options, you'll see. So let's go step by step. The image calculation command lets you blend two individual layer channels from the same image or two different source images. You can then export the result as a new image or as a new channel or a selection in the current image. The calculations dialog box can look a bit confusing but to create a basic highlights luminosity mask is pretty straightforward. Since we're dealing with just one image, both of these source images will be the same. So all we need to do is choose the layer, the channels and the blend mode. For the result, we will set it to the new channel because that's where we want to save our luminosity mask just like we did with the selection method in the first technique. The big difference is our mask will be created directly in the channel without the need to create selections. So it will be in 16 bits because making selections will turn it into 8 bits remember? Now both the layer options will be the same as well. If you have a single layered image use the background. But if you have more than one layer the merge layer option will be available and should be selected as it will be the final combined look of all layers. Make sure both the channels are grey and for the basic highlights mask the blending option should be normal. And once you click OK, the basic highlights mask that you're seeing right now will be generated as a new channel just as we've set in the result. Now for the basic shadows luminosity mask, simply check the inward button on the source 1 section and just like that you have the shadows mask. Because what is an inverted basic highlights channel? It is the basic shadows channel. So if you click OK now, you should get this shadows mask that you're previewing in the channels palette. But I won't click OK just as yet because I want to show you how to create the midtones. 
Midtones are created by intersecting the basic highlights and the basic shadows. So, to intersect in calculations, you need to multiply both the source channels. And how do you do that? It's very simple. Simply set the blend mode to multiply and just like that you will have the midtones mask. Now let's change the blend mode back to normal and uncheck the invert of the first source channel to make it a basic highlights again. Now we have two basic highlights channel in source 1 and source 2. And if I set the blend mode to multiply, I will be intersecting them, right? And do you remember what do you get when you intersect the basic highlight selection by itself? That's right, the second brighter highlight selection. So as soon as I set the blend mode to multiply, check it out, we have the second highlights channel. In the same way we can create the second shadows mask, simply invert the two basic channels with the blend mode in multiply. And this is the second shadow channel because now you're simply intersecting the basic shadow selection by itself. So now, as soon as I click OK, this preview will be saved as a new channel. Have a look. There, let's rename this to Shadows 2. And this Shadows 2 channel should be used as the second source in the calculations dialog to create the Shadows 3 mask using the blend mode multiply. And this way you can go on and on and create multiple luminosity channels. Now comes the most important part, that is to make these channels a 16-bit mask. Because if you control or command click to make a selection, this workflow technique becomes pointless as selections are always 8 bits. So, to transfer this channel and apply it as a 16-bit mask, we need to use Photoshop's apply image. But first, let's create an adjustment layer or any pixel layer you need the luminosity mask applied on. And then, make sure to select the layer mask by clicking on it. Now let's go to image and then apply image. So, what is apply image? It is exactly what its name suggests. It lets you apply an image on your layer or a layer mask. You can also apply blended versions of the source image. The source is normally the image you have open, but it can also be any other image having the same pixel dimensions, but of any color mode like lab or grayscale. Think of apply image as a little brother of calculations. While calculations exports the blended image as a new document or a new channel, apply image applies the blend on the layer or a layer mask. So these tools are essentially doing the same thing. In fact, I wish these both tools should be combined so we could save, apply or export as a channel or a layer mask from just one dialog box. But that's not the case at the moment. So let's see how to apply our luminosity shadow channel as our shadows layer mask. Just like in calculations, First we need to choose the source layer which in this case is merged because we want the final combined look of all the layers that we have. The merge layers option will be available only if you have more than one layer, otherwise you'll have the background layer. For this technique, even though the multiply usually gives the same result, the blending mode should be ideally set to normal. And finally, the channel section is the most important part. Why? Because our luminosity mask is saved as a channel. So we need to specify what channel to apply as a mask. By default, it has applied the RGB channel as the mask, which you can see already applied to the layer mask thumbnail. But what we want here is the Shadows 2 luminosity mask. Now watch what happens to the layer mask thumbnail as I choose the Shadows 2 channel. It instantly applies the channel as a 16-bit luminosity mask. So let's click OK. When you hold Alt or Option and click on the mask, it will display the mask. And to switch back to the image display, you can click on the layer thumbnail or alt or option and click on the mask again. Okay, we have a slightly different but very easy and interactive method to apply 16-bit luminosity mask. And that is by using the blend if sliders. You can access the blending options of a layer by double clicking it or choose layer, layer style and then blending options. And for those who have the Pro Workflow X panel, you can go to the scene mode and click on blend if. In the bottom of the advanced blending area, you will find the blend if sliders. The blend if sliders are one of the most powerful and underutilized tools in Photoshop. Basically, when the blending range is set to the gray channel, blend if lets you specify a luminosity tonal range for blending layers. Now just like with luminosity masks, you can select certain lightness levels that will be visible while the rest of the lightness levels will be hidden or masked. So with blend if we can create a luminosity mask without actually creating a mask. And how do you do that with blend if? Simply by moving the sliders. Have a look. So only the information that lies between the black and the white sliders will be visible. 
So right now, the entire luminosity range between 0 to 255 is visible. And don't get alarmed with the 8-bit luminosity range values even if you're working in 16 bits. Watch this bit depth video linked above to clear any doubts regarding bit depth in Photoshop. The top this layer sliders uses luminosity and color information from only the current or active layer and lets you modify the luminance range. This works like the luminosity mask on the current layer. So, if I drag the black slider to 150, pixels with the lightness levels lower than 150 will be excluded or hidden from the final image. In other words, the luminosity range from 0 to 150 will be masked out and only the range between 150 to 255 will be visible. Now you can also feather the selected range. All you need to do is press Alt or Option to split the slider and move them apart to smooth the transition. The two values that appear above the divided slider indicate the feathered blending range. While the top this layer slider works great for images and adjustment layers like curves, if you use anything like a solid color fill or paint on an empty layer, then in that case, the this layer option doesn't have any highlights or shadows for blending as it is a flat color. In such cases, the bottom underlying layer slider should be used which uses the information from the underlying layers or the layers below the current active layer. You can even use both the sliders for even more control. Now Blendif is a dynamic luminosity masking method, while regular luminosity masks are static, meaning if the layer is modified below, then Blendif takes the modified luminosity into account. And this two blended layer icon on the layer indicates that the Blendif sliders have been modified. If I reset or clear the Blendif, the icon will disappear. Also with Blendif, you not only have access to the luminosity values in the grey channel, but also the individual red, green and blue color channels. But that I'll cover in an upcoming tutorial. Now the final method to create the luminosity mask is the most powerful technique, which is also incorporated in the Pro Workflow X panel, and that is by using curves. And yes, you heard that right. You can create a high quality 16-bit mask using a curves adjustment layer. So first, I'll explain you how this technique works and in the end, I'll show you why is it on top of the list. So let's see how to create a luminosity mask using curves. The first step is to create a black and white adjustment layer. Basically, we want to remove the color so the image looks like a black and white mask preview. Next, I'll create a curves adjustment layer. Now if you're not familiar with curves, I would highly recommend you watch the mastering curves video linked above so you can really understand the idea behind this technique. So, in the default curves position, we have the black control point at the bottom right with the value 0 and the white control point at the top right with the value 255, just like we saw in the blend if luminosity range from 0 to 255. So right now, we have the basic highlights range displayed by default. Now, if I want to display the basic shadows range, I need to invert it, right? And what is inverting? It is making the black white and making the white black. So how do we do that in curves? It's very simple. The bottom left control point is black at the value 0. We'll just drag it up to the brightness scale all the way to 255 which is white. Okay, now we have both the points in white so our image is white. So let's drag the white control point from 255 all the way down to 0 to make it black. And just like that, we have inverted the mask. Okay, so what about the midtones? If you remember from the video, in curves we can create up to 12 mid control points anywhere on the diagonal between the black and the white point. But for this technique, all I need to do is create one mid control point in the center of 0 to 255 which is 128, the value of mid gray. So let's type 128 exactly in the input and output boxes. Now watch this, as soon as I bring the black point down to 0, we get the mid tones mask. Because the white point is already 0 that is black. So the only thing visible right now is the midtones. And you can also drag the midtones control point all the way up to 255. And this will make a very strong midtone selection. And that's the beauty of the curves method. It is interactive and you can pinpoint the luminosity you want as a mask and even create custom luminosity masks. So now it's time to apply this luminosity range that we selected as a mask. But first we have to create a layer we want to apply the mask to. Because these two are just our temporary mask preview layers. So I'll create another curves adjustment layer and click on the mask to make it active. And this is where I want the mask to appear. So now, how do I apply this image as a layer mask? You guessed it right. Image, apply image. Just like we did in calculations previously. And have a look, 
our image is already applied as the mask. Unlike calculations, here we don't need to specify any channel because the luminosity mask preview was created in the image itself. So once I click OK, I can delete the previous curves and black and white adjustment layers and all you'll be left is with the new curves layer with the 16-bit luminosity mask applied. Now let's get to the part we've all been waiting for. The reason why this is the most powerful method. Let me show you. As I said before, the Pro Workflow X panel also uses the curves and the black and white adjustment layer technique to create the luminosity mask. The only difference is that there are a lot more luminosities to begin with. And instead of modifying the curves directly, you can click on Refine Mask which opens up the Levels dialog. And with this, you can further refine the mask using the sliders. Now this is the part that will blow your mind. Remember the black and white adjustment layer that we created? Well, it was not just to make the image black and white. You can also target all these colors in your image individually. So, if I want to select the reds from the shadows of this luminosity mask, all I need to do is drag the red slider all the way to the right to make it bright and the mask will reveal the red areas. Similarly, if I want to hide the yellows from the luminosity mask, I'll make it dark by dragging the yellow slider to the left. If you remember, black conceals. I can also do the same for the greens. You're getting the idea, right? Can you imagine the amount of control you can have with your luminosity mask with this technique? I remember the days when you used to scroll through each channel to see which one had a nice contrast. But this completely changes the game because this not only gives you the power to choose but to do it interactively. And using this curves method, you can also create paint layers to fine tune the mask. Now we already have the tool presets in the panel but pay attention to the layers to see what they do because they're very easy to do it yourself. So the dodge tool preset will paint white in overlay mode so it doesn't affect the blacks in the mask. It will only brighten the whites. The burn tool preset will darken only the blacks. It's kind of like burning the blacks without affecting the whites. The black paint tool will paint everything black and the white paint tool will paint everything white. Remember white reveals while black conceals. And once you're done, you can use apply image to create the mask. But if you're using the Pro Workflow X panel, you can simply choose how you want to load this mask. As a selection, a curve layer, a hue saturation layer and so on. So if you choose curves, it will create a curve layer and apply the 16-bit mask using apply image. But if you use selection, remember that selections are always 8-bit. So you should mainly use it to make cutouts. But that's not all. You can also apply blend if to this luminosity mask. Remember blend if? The panel has presets for blend if highlights, midtones, and shadows, which is where I want the brightness of the curve. So if I click blend if, you can see the settings for the shadows. You can also fine tune it if you want. Everything is pure Photoshop. And of course you can do this manually by double clicking the layer. But let's not stop here. Remember we are visual artists and photography is a visual art. So what if you don't want the shadows of the entire image to be affected? Right now the curves is affecting the entire mask. But if you want to paint in the mask using another mask, Photoshop won't allow that. It allows you to add a vector mask which is for paths and shapes. So the workaround to do this, as you'll see as soon as I click on paint in, a new group is formed just with our curve layer and a black mask. So if I paint in white, I will reveal the effect of the mask curve layer. This is called painting through a luminosity mask. It's like painting with a safety net. And now we have the artistic freedom to paint in exactly the area we want affected. The power of a luminosity mask is that you can make targeted color and tone adjustments to a certain luminosity zone. You can also apply selective sharpening to different tonal areas, do HDR tone mapping and make complex selections. And all these techniques will be upcoming in different video tutorials after this. So make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified. And for the early birds who are watching this video in the first 48 hours since the release of this video and have made it so far, here is a 50% discount for you for the Pro Workflow X panel which is already on sale on the website. So use this code displayed on the screen during your checkout. The website link is in the description below. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it was helpful. And until next week, have fun retouching.